here are a few examples. So we all know like this is the standard way in which we use to configure OSPF, but there also exists an alternative way where rather than using the network statement, you are actually directly adding the interface into the OSPF. Okay, so these are the two ways in which you can configure OSPF. And then when it comes to optimize, so you can uh, to fasten up your OSPF process, you have to optimize your OSPF configuration. So here you can enable the passive interface. So when you configure a passive interface, the OSPF is not participating, or we can say that a particular interface is not included in the OSPF process. So suppose if you connect it to a network, where you don't want to share your OSPF configuration, then you can configure that very interface as the passive interface. Okay, so it will save you a lot of time and it will also save your router's precious configuration, uh, like pre precious resources. So your router will not be wasting its time using or sending or assessing information from any of the interface through which it is not supposed to communicate. Now, once we are done with the optimization, we come towards the LSA configuration. So LSA, as you know, link state advertisement, uh, the things or the kind of like information that each router exchange with each other in order to stay updated about the network changes. So there are a couple of LSS that we are totally aware of, like say type one, two, three, four, five, seven. So these are all your IPv4 LSS. 